Historic Shorthand, Porn and Video Games. It's an awkward subject for an entire book. I admit it. When confronted with why I devoted so much time and effort to it, I would retreat into the posture of academic objectivity and reply that there is a pattern, a parallel, between video games and major shifts in pop culture. After all, if we examine games as closely as their immense cultural impact merited and not dismiss them offhand, there's no question that we learn far more about ourselves than yet another field trip to the symphony or the local art museum. The big idea here is that there's nothing new under the sun. Extremists like Fox mouthpiece Bill O'Reilly talk about internet pornography corrupting our society, the destructive power of sexy reality television, and, of course, the connection between youth sexual violence and a game of Grand Theft Auto. While kids should be protected, it is also important to recognize that erotic expression within pop culture is hardly new. Concerns were thrown on comic books in the 50s, when artists were forced to cover their curvy vixens up and not discuss adult situations. Brutally sexual, or sexually brutal, grindhouse movies and bikini films from the likes of Russ Meyer and Roger Corman fed a generation's appetite for tempting villainesses and pseudo-sadomasochistic antics, as did film noir, black exploitation, and other film genres before and after. Today, we're watching Laura Cross breasts heave into her too tight tank top or Grand Theft Auto prostitute giving our hero his money's worth. We still want dark sexual thrills through our entertainment. The only thing that's changed is the medium. If the corruption society were only about sexual content, wouldn't previous generations with their filthy comic books, exploitation films, and burlesque shows be just as dysfunctional as we are? I suspect that's the case. This is a young subject. The modern pornography industry began just 35 years ago, near when I was born. Modern video games also started around the same time, and the lasting cultural impact of this convergence has yet to be analyzed. This book is live coverage of two moving targets. The concepts of modern pornography and video games are evolving literally every day. Modern history is not static. Porn and Pong is a Polaroid, not a final assessment. And while we won't completely understand the impact of, say, Laura Croft on our pop cultural landscape until much later, the earliness and immaturity of video game eroticism makes it even more important to document this right now. When my young Gen X generation was growing up, pornography meant bootleg VCR tapes and softcore Cinemax. To the previous generation, pornography meant Playboy magazine and, depending on your knowledge and location, Times Square peep show booths. To their parents, it was faster pussycat kill kill, and if they were lucky, illicit 35 millimeter films watched on expensive home projectors. Video games have had an even more explosive evolution. My grandparents weren't even exposed to modern pornography or to video games until they were in their 40s. The fact that we went from Deep Throat and Pong to online prostitution and in-game virtual sex partners in three decades shows how technology is pushing us into new sexual mores, and as a result, more sexual quandaries than ever before. Does the technology of sharing intimate words on a keyboard afford us a new type of sexual connection as much as, say, phone sex lines did previously? Is a virtual working girl pleasuring men in an online fantasy game as criminally guilty of prostitution as the high-heeled woman walking the downtown streets? Mature video games bring these philosophical, ethical questions to the forefront. While we're dealing with the same shit, sexual dynamics, the rapid growth of technology is creating a new world worth exploring, if not actively building ourselves. It is also important to notice the exponential rise of actual sex in video games, and it is because of both the gaming audience and society in general. According to the Electronic Software Association, the average gamer is a 35-year-old male, and looking backwards, the average age has increased by one year every year in recent memory, 33 in 2005, 34 in 2006, and so on. The 80s teenagers raised on Mario are now sexually active men around the peak of the average porn consumer. So yeah, there is more sex in video games than ever before. Society as a whole is also on, on the fast track to understanding and adjusting to new sexual opportunities. Going back to the release of Deep Throat, the sexual world of 1972 had no herpes, VCRs, mainstream theater pornography, 1 in 100 numbers, softcore cable, AIDS, internet pornography, online dating, and virtual sex, or as it is now called, cybering. Wow, how much we've had to adapt. Therefore, this book is bottom heavy. Eras fall between 1972 and 1975, 1976 and 2001, and 2001 and 2007. 
and each era has twice as many games as the previous one. It's harder than ever to follow what is new in our sex tech crazy world. Video games are one of the few tangible mediums we can grab onto to understand who we are, where we've been, and where we might be going. My aim is to connect the disregarded and ignored video games to movies, music, sex, technology, and other pop culture barometers. So I picked a selection of games that were most reflective of the times. Not every sex-oriented game is in this book. Veteran game designer Brendan Brathwaite's Sex and Video Games, released in 2006, gives a more thorough overview of the titles released. I focused on titles considered games in the colloquial sense. Grand Theft Auto and Tomb Raider are discussed. But Virtual Jenna, a sex simulator based on porn star Jenna Jameson, is not. The exceptions I recognize are Linden Lab's Second Life, a handful of other virtual worlds that have made an impact on video game design, as well as modern views of sex and technology. I would have loved to have mentioned every single title I came across, and there are literally hundreds. But to capture the broad idea, I had to focus my broad idea. Great software titles have been mercilessly edited out of my inquiry. I've done my best to keep a straight face while discussing digital poo, jingling virtual bosoms, and other hapless attempts at being sexy. But why? I've found that underneath these immature gestures, we can actually see how well our society is evolving sexual dynamics in the new millennium. And let's be real. To better understand this period of time, future generations will not be digging out the latest Oprah Book Club selection, nor will they care about the art sold yesterday at Christie's or the Yo-Yo Ma piece performed at the Met. Instead, they will recover old internet pages, rusty, non-biodegradable cell phones, bad reality TV DVDs, and interactive digital entertainment. Video games will be part of our historical shorthand. We may as well start looking at them now. Damon Brown, September 2008.